we're thinking about the way that we can use space technology, even close to home, in low Earth orbit for the benefit of life on Earth, even while we also plan for Mars. Welcome to Expanding Space, Newsweek's deep dive into the cosmos, from the moon to Mars and beyond. Featuring insight from top experts, scientists, and former astronauts, Expanding Space will push the boundaries of what we know and what we have yet to discover. I'm Joshua Rett Miller here at Newsweek. Today's guest is Dr. Ariel Ekblau, founder of the MIT Space Exploration Initiative. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thanks so much for having me. Can you maybe talk about the cusp of what we're on right now in terms of space. We have a really incredible moment in the space industry that is quite different than the last era that people really paid attention to in the nation, which was the Apollo era. That era was funded basically by the government, military defense and government, because of the Cold War. When the Cold War ended, we basically had this interregnum period where there wasn't as much momentum behind spaceflight and most of NASA's budget was kind of captured in the International Space Station in planning and maintaining and deploying this incredible feat of human engineering in low Earth orbit. What's different now at this inflection point is that we have a burgeoning in space economy. So we actually have for-profit endeavors that can now make real money operating in low Earth orbit and now maybe even cis lunar space between here and the moon. And that supplements the government budgets and makes it possible to do so much more commercial activity now. We really are on the cusp of interplanetary activity, interplanetary civilization, thinking about a sustainable lunar settlement on the moon, eventually an outpost on Mars. And what Aurelia is really excited about, my Aurelia Institute, we're thinking about the way that we can use space technology even close to home in low Earth orbit for the benefit of life on Earth, even while we also plan for Mars. And I think that's one of the most important things to communicate to people now. At the center of all this are self-assembling tiles, essentially. They're parametric, so they can be any size that we need them to be. The idea originally from my MIT thesis was these tiles are a mix of pentagons and hexagons, and they self-assemble to form basically a glorified soccer ball. If you ever remember those white and black shapes on a soccer ball, it's the same as a buckyball. And what that allows us to do is take a complex shape like a sphere and tile it. And that means that we can actually maximize the amount of volume for a given surface area by getting as close to a sphere as possible. The tiles themselves, what allows them to come together and form this geometry, they have powerful electro-permanent magnets on their edges. So this is like the opposite of an electromagnet. They're always on, so without any power, they passively dock together, which is the really big innovation. That's really fascinating. I mean, it feels very futuristic, very space age, like almost like the Jetsons. Where did this idea come from? You really hit on it. There's so much inspiration for our organization and my work personally from science fiction. We're really excited about the technology that enables our future, but we also want to think about the political science and the ethics and the governance of what it will be like to live within our habitats and live within these settlements, potentially as humanity expands out into the near neighborhood of our cosmos. So we've had the absolute honor to test the Tesserae tiles in miniature twice already in space. So they flew in 2020 on board the International Space Station and they flew again in 22 on the Axiom-1 mission. And now what we're gearing up for is we think within the next decade, we will be able to do a human crewed self-assembling module at scale. NASA has had Mars in its distant yes. target for decades, obviously. In the past couple of months, it's obviously been a hot topic with both the president and then Elon Musk. He's since pledged that the country is going to, quote, reach Mars by the end of his presidency. That time frame has invoked some skepticism, but I was hoping to get your take on that. I do think that leadership... Um at the very top absolutely helps reinvigorate and, and motivate and push forward space exploration. I think one of the things that happened in Trump's first term is that he put a lot of focus again on the moon, 
on Artemis, NASA has had an interesting challenge administration to administration when the focus switches from moon to Mars and moon to Mars. But I think that they have landed on a really compelling strategy that I think is still consistent with President Trump's goals and Elon Musk's goals. Use the moon as a stepping stone to get to Mars. And obviously SpaceX is doing amazing work with Starship, going to absolutely revolutionize our industry for space here on Earth in the Earth orbit. Also probably going to be the best candidate vehicle that we have to be able to get to Mars quickly. But that ability to learn about deep space exploration and keeping humans alive on the moon is critical. The moon is only three days away. Mars is six to nine months away, best case, depending on the orbits of the planets. And I do think that sticking with the Artemis program, using that as a building, you know, stepping stone to be ready to do Mars missions safely is a really important pathway. Exactly. As you said, NASA has put forth a moon to Mars strategy for a very long time now, whereas Musk has lately said it's not about the moon. Let's go straight to Mars. That's the goal. Yeah. That's the prize. How do you perhaps see that shaking out, particularly if you think about Musk's close ties to Jared Isaacman, who has been mm -hmm. tapped as the next NASA head? I do still think it's interesting for SpaceX to maintain some interest in the moon because of the human landing system contract. Like they're still potentially able to have a piece of that key strategy. But yes, you know, Elon has made it very clear since when he founded SpaceX that his vision is really to be able to use SpaceX to get humanity to Mars, to help us be interplanetary. And certainly Jared Isaacman, I think is a actually a really inspired pick for NASA administrator. I've had the pleasure of meeting him before. I can see them developing strategy that leverages some of the existing rocket technology, the road to space, some of the things that we've learned about from now, you know, two decades on the International Space Station, some preliminary work on the moon, to be able to chart a course to be able to get to Mars, to get boots on Mars. What else can we learn from going to Mars? So Mars will teach us a lot about sustaining human life in an extreme environment. And in some ways, this really is very important for Earth because there are a lot of extreme environments on Earth where we also try to survive as fragile biological human beings. Right. So a couple interesting examples. On Mars, there's perchlorates in the soil. So unlike the Martian, you can't actually grow potatoes natively in the substrate on Mars, in the regolith. That will force us to develop really robust, self-contained agriculture. That's an amazing innovation that we could use for areas that are food deserts. The next aspect is radiation. If we figure out how to shield space habitats for that long duration mission, some of those technologies could again be brought down for cancer treatment, radiation therapy, mitigating the effect that you know pilots have when they're facing radiation. Just another example of some of the things that we'll learn and cross over knowledge between the domains. Space has obviously been a hobby or an interest for millions of people, but it appears to be taking a larger presence in pop culture of late. What do you think about that and, and, and how inspiring is that for the type of work that you do? It's incredibly inspiring and I think it's the right mindset shift for humans to have, which is space is not necessarily a new sector, space is a domain where all of these different sectors of human life will be applicable. So there'll be entertainment, there'll be you know heavy industry, there will be science, all kinds of different applications of human life, basically just expanding into the cocoon of low Earth orbit and then eventually out into the near neighborhood of the cosmos. And so I think it's really fitting as we begin to kind of update our conception of the possible this decade with what can be done with space exploration, that it's entering pop culture in like a really fun and inventive uh, and playful way. I would love for the you know, US public and global public to have fun with the idea of space and have more of them see themselves in that future.